Hey soldiers, we got another case of sanctions mania that is destroying the confidence in the U.S. dollar. It is driving us further and further toward losing dollar hegemony. And it is making the value of the dollars that you have in savings worth less. Who's doing this? Joe Biden. Joe Biden and those sanctions, they have not learned that this is actually turning countries against the United States. It is bolstering BRICS, for example. But, you know, hey, the Biden administration, they're not too quick on the uptake. Now, the latest thing that they are doing is imposing sanctions on an African country. All right. Now, watch what they're doing. They're imposing sanctions on an African country for behavior that is currently the law of the land in American ally countries like Saudi Arabia. So this is a duplicitous process. It is, uh, one might say, bullying Africa because this certain African country lacks a very important component. We'll get to that in a minute. In the meantime, like, subscribe, hit that thumbs up. You guys do it so well, so go ahead and do that. Enlist, become a soldier of finance. Let me know you did so in the comments. I will salute you. And I need you to hit that join button and find out how you can make an investment in yourself that's going to put you on the straight and narrow, the road to financial independence. You're going to feel so good about the return on investment you get from joining the Officers Club. That is the Soldiers of Finance, uh, Finance Membership Only Club. All right, check it out. Just hit join and learn more. Guys, uh, Biden wants sanctions against Uganda because its government passed anti-LGBTQ laws. Now, before you just off the cuff say, well, yeah, we should take our money out of there because uh, they're doing this. OK, that might be true. But before we do that, let's examine all of the countries that we are allied with that have similar or harsher punishments just for being LGBTQ. I don't know the rest. All right. Uh, in an excellent display of how U.S. foreign policy can be used as a means of pandering to domestic interest groups, the Biden administration has threatened to impose sanctions on Uganda as punishment for that regime's adoption of new laws criminalizing some types of homosexual behavior. Now, I don't believe homosexuality should be criminalized. All right. Uh, that's a big leap right there, don't you think? I think that if you want to prevent the type of things Uganda is trying to prevent, there are ways to do that without focusing on one particular demographic. Let's read further. But, and again, that's what I think. I don't write laws in Uganda though. Okay. So, you know, at the end of the day, I don't have any purview over that, but that is how I feel. I don't think they should target them in this way. We're going to talk about how they can accomplish what they want to get done without having to do it like this. So maybe someone from Uganda is listening, someone in a high position over there. According to Axios, the Biden administration's proposed actions include, ironically, whether the U.S. will continue to safely deliver services under the U.S. president's emergency plan for AIDS relief and other forms of assistance and investment. Now, look, the demographic that suffers from AIDS, HIV the most are uh, is the LGBT community. So why would you hurt them? They are not making the uh, policy there, okay? But this is the Biden administration, guys. So, you know, whatever. Biden administration officials will also review Uganda's eligibility for the African Growth and Opportunity Act, which provides eligible sub-Saharan African countries with duty-free access to the U.S. market for hundreds of products. So America, the U.S. regime, Biden administration is trying to send a message saying, hey, don't do that. Don't make any laws that we don't like. These sub-Saharan countries that are involved in this African Growth and Opportunity Act, bet you a dollar to a donut, they're saying, look, we need to figure out ways to back out of this and uh, maybe just diversify uh, into some other organization. Maybe the BRICS has got something going on because here we go again with America thinking that they can run everybody. Okay. We can't even run our own damn country. You see what's going on in the streets of America these days? And we're telling everybody else what to do. What exactly are the new laws that require the State Department to get involved in the internal affairs of a country 8,000 miles away? 
According to The Hill, the new anti-gay law would impose a death penalty in cases of what they are calling, Uganda is calling, aggravated homosexuality. Okay, so that's one thing. Keep your mind focused on that term they're using, aggravated homosexuality. We'll define that in a minute. They also would impose a life sentence for engaging in gay sex. So just for being, you know, someone who is of a different sexual pro uh, proclivity, you could be facing life in prison. I think that's abhorrent. All right. That's that's incredible. But that's what they're proposing. The state of Uganda defines aggravated, let's go back, aggravated homosexuality. At, now, this is the one they said that they'll impose a death penalty for. They're defining aggravated homosexuality as homosexual acts carried out by those infected with HIV or homosexual acts that involve children, disabled people, or those drugged against their will. Okay? Those crimes are just unthinkable, all right? Um, do they warrant the death penalty? That's a discussion that is for another video. Weigh in in the comments uh, what your opinion is on that. Put another way, the death penalty will be imposed in many cases on those found guilty of engaging in these acts with children and with people unable to consent. Now, uh, let's go further and then I'll stop. Even in those cases, these are pretty harsh penalties and certainly few Americans from any political party or any part of the political spectrum would support such measures. Look, if you want to create harsh laws for people who commit these heinous crimes, don't just focus on one demographic. Focus on anyone who does this, okay? So if someone commits one of these acts with a member of the opposite sex, for example, okay, shouldn't they be uh, the recipient of a form of justice that is equivalent across the board, right? I'm not saying what kind of penalty, but shouldn't there be equivalency in the law? It's just you know, something I'm thinking of. Uh the proposed method of punishing Ugandans is rather curious, however. The sanctions, note that the sanctions being discussed include, ironically, like I said before, I'm just going through this, cutting off AIDS relief dollars, plus dollars that the regime has long insisted are absolutely vital to economic development and poverty relief in the developing world. If that's true, then the U.S. regime proposes trying to impoverish ordinary Ugandans as punishment for acts of the Ugandan regime, just like they did with Russia, for example. Oh, Netflix came running out of Russia, McDonald's. Did they really think that Putin was bothered by that? Did they think that the oligarchs were taking time out of sitting on their yachts and, you know, doing international business? Did they think they were saying, oh, hey, whoa, 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 that meeting that I got scheduled with you to talk about buying more uh, yachts and more oil fields? Hold off, uh, you know, Squid Games is on and I got to catch up. Or did they think Putin was just like such a, a, a slave to the Big Mac that when he found out sanctions were going to be imposed, he said, oh, hold on, I'm going to pull troops out because, you know, I, that special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on the sesame seed bun, I can't resist. Okay, this hurts the people, not the actual ones making decisions. It also, it, uh, it is also notable that the U.S. regime appears to now be fixed on, fixated rather, on such laws in Uganda when similar laws are already existing on the books of several U.S. allies. Mm -hmm. For example, the death penalty can be imposed for various homosexual acts in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates. Death by stoning is also inflicted on alleged homosexuals in U.S. ally Pakistan. Moreover, after 20 years of U.S. occupation, Afghanistan imposes several punishments uh, on the homosexual community. And we were in there for 20 years. We were imposing democracy at the, you know, 
point of the M4, right? And we didn't clean that up while we were there? How duplicitous, how, uh, you know, hypocritical of us. But, you know, it's America, right? Uh, and when I say America, please understand, I love this country. I despise this government. Um, those are just the places where the death penalty is potentially imposed. Homosexual acts are criminalized, believe it or not, in a variety of countries that retain friendly relations with the U.S., including Egypt, the top recipient of U.S. foreign aid, plus Iraq, Jordan, South Sudan, and Nigeria. Homosexual sex between males can bring life imprisonment in Tanzania. So why is Uganda now so much in the crosshair, crosshairs while Saudi Arabia escapes notice? Well, come on. Okay, you know what Saudi Arabia has. They, has oil, they have, rather, oil, and they're aligning further with uh, the East. They're leaving U.S. hegemony behind, diversifying. The fact is the U.S. regime is threatening sanctions on ordinary Ugandans because it can, given that there is no sizable or electorally powerful Ugandan population in the U.S., it costs the administration nothing to denounce Uganda while also virtue signaling to extremely powerful and well-funded domestic LGBT interest groups. I want you to also take a look at how that community is treated in um, Ukraine. Okay, just look it up. Denouncing the Saudis or the Qataris, on the other hand, might bring geopolitical complications and thus you won't hear much about Saudi or Qatari punishment for homosexual uh, for homosexual acts in the U.S. media or in Washington. So we got uh, some moralistic uh, imperialism, some uh, some financial colonialism going on here. Uh, so that's what the U.S. does, okay? And that's why more and more countries are backing off saying, you know what, we're not going to put up with this anymore. Uh, we're going to ally with countries economically that respect our sovereignty. Again, if you go throughout all of the countries in the world, first of all, you can start here in the United States if you're a citizen. There's going to be a bunch of laws that we have that you disagree with. So you can bet your bottom dollar that as you start to travel around the world, you may find yourself in places they have some laws you think are absolutely abominable, okay? Uh, yeah, that's reality. But uh, the question is, is it actually good for the United States to carry out this hypocritical moral uh, process or uh, moral initiative, okay, when we don't have our own house clean to begin with? But in the wake of what we've seen happen with the sanctions that we've imposed on Russia and the blowback that we've gotten and the realignment of world nations since then, the rise of China taking advantage of all of it, do we really think it's still a good idea to impose sanctions on these countries for these capricious uh, uh, reasons of, you know, saying we don't like what you've got going on domestically? Sure, it's the look, if the United States is giving away money, it's our money, right? And so at the end of the day, we elect these people to decide who to give the money to. Sure, we can take it away. Um, fine. But you're taking away money from the very community that you claim to be so um, you know, committed to helping the gay community in Uganda. You take away that AIDS funding, you really think that you're helping the gay community at all? Wouldn't it Here's an idea, okay, since the U.S. just loves printing up money. Here's an idea. How about as a form of protest, you say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to give, and you're doing this, we're going to give 10% more to this community. That's how we're going to show our commitment to uh, this community in Uganda. Instead of saying we're going to abandon them financially. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't know, guys. Uh, and, uh, Hollywood for ugly people. That is DC and uh, increasingly Hollywood for the mentally addled as well. 
All right, guys, speaking of what's going on here in America, take a look at this. We got our own little purge going on here in America. And we're talking about, you know, cleaning up everybody else's act. Meanwhile, United States Marines were attacked by a mob of young scholars. Check it out. Guys, this is why people are leaving these cities. Businesses are fleeing. The homeowners are fleeing. Check it out. I'll talk to you soon.